Thank you to everyone who has joined us today for the HireImmigrants.ca webinar on boarding skilled immigrants, ensuring success All participants for new have been hire. This webinar is hosted by HireImmigrants.ca and the Allies team. And for those who may not know, Allies stands for Assisting Local Leaders with Immigrant Employment Strategies. Allies provides funding, technical assistance, and leverages corporate connections to assist local initiatives in breaking down the barriers that skilled immigrants face when seeking employment in the Canadian workplace. So, good afternoon to those on the East Coast and good morning to those on the West Coast and thank you for joining us. My name is Alan Rago and I'll be the facilitator for this webinar. I work for Procter & Gamble which is the largest consumer products company in Canada. As a consumer relations manager, my role is to support consumers in Canada and the U.S. who choose our multi-brand product offerings in the market and to influence business decisions based on consumer insights. I've had an enduring interest in employee orientation, both as leader and participant. And on the line with us today, we have Eileen Evans, Lead Recruitment Advisor for Providence Healthcare in Vancouver. Eileen, would you, can you tell us a bit about yourself in Providence Healthcare? Sure. Thank you, Alan. Um, as Alan mentioned, I am the Lead Recruitment Advisor here at Providence Healthcare. We are located in downtown Vancouver and have about approximately 15 sites located in the Vancouver area. Uh, we are one of the largest faith-based care organizations in Vancouver and in Canada. And we um, specialize with population of emphasis for health care in areas such as urban health, HIV AIDS, cardiopulmonary risks, um, renal diseases. So we have a large population of emphasis and being located in downtown Vancouver, those are our populations of emphasis. Thank you, Eileen. We also have Jackie Coffey, uh, an internationally educated nurse who works for Providence Healthcare, and she will share her experience of going through the onboarding at Providence, uh, Providence Healthcare. Now, just a few notes on the webinar technology for our callers before we get started. Uh, everyone has been muted to minimize the background noise and feedback. We welcome any questions you have during the course of the webinar. You may type them in the chat field found in the bottom left -hand corner of the screen. Your questions will be answered during the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. We may also ask you some questions through a polling feature, and that's being done to gauge your views on a particular topic relevant to the webinar. As with previous uh, HireImmigrants.ca webinars, this presentation will be made available online for those unable to join us today or if you would like to review or share any part of the presentations, and that typically takes 8 to 10 days or so. So over the next hour, we're going to talk about the importance of onboarding, how to do it properly, and how to adapt your onboarding practices for skilled immigrant employees. We'll also hear about Providence Healthcare's orientation for new employees and the extra supports they have in place for internationally educated nurses. And the last 20 minutes will be dedicated and we see that there are already some questions being asked through the chat box, so wonderful. If we don't cover the, all of the questions in the course of the webinar, we will do so during the Q&A period. Moving ahead, employee orientation or onboarding, the term that we in PNG use, has been used by organizations for years. So why is it important to get it done right? Let me touch on just a few key points. When new hires feel welcomed and prepared in their new positions, a positive domino effect cascades through the team. There's a keenness to start strong, and the positive impact is often felt across the board. We all know that transitions are a chance for the organization and the employee to make a fresh start, but 
It's also a time of vulnerability because the new employee is yet to fully grasp the role and understand the organization. In addition, the working relationships that could make or mar performance are yet to be made. And so, orientation can help with that. Having said that, the cost of not doing an orientation or onboarding well is high. According to IDC, a global market intelligence firm, employees in the U.S. and U.K. cost businesses an estimated 37 billion U.S. dollars every year because they do not fully understand their jobs and consequently are unable to contribute to the level expected. Before we move along, I'd like to pose a question. Do you provide onboarding for new employees? Now, this question is appearing on your screen, and we'll wait to see what participants are saying. That's great. So it's almost uh, two-thirds of the people saying, or more than that, huh? I guess I should wait for another minute or so. <laughs> Great. So it looks like seven out of ten participants say that they are using uh, onboarding in their organizations. So nice to know that. Uh, moving along, an effective orientation will enable the new employee to transition smoothly to the new organization, its objectives and core values. They start to experience both at very close quarters, and they tend to compare it with their own expectations and also their, with their previous experience in earlier organizations. It's similar to a consumer who's trying out a product for the first time and comparing the, that experience with their expectations or perceptions of the brand promise. Secondly, uh, good transition, good orientation, the effect it has is to help the un employee understand the new role and how it fits with the department and organization. And, and thirdly, it shortens the learning curve so the employee knows where to find the resources and supports needed to begin contributing to the expected level. And as for the effect on organizations, an effective orientation helps to get output from the employee sooner. It's like getting a quick boost to the ROI, uh, which is return on investment. Second uh, benefit to the organization is it tends to minimize the costs associated with learning on the job. This can be especially relevant in production and customer interactions. And thirdly, it saves coworkers and supervisors the time, the training time, to train the new employee. In that sense, it enables productivity for the organization to move up. A question that arises is, what special considerations would you make for a new hire who is a newly arrived skilled immigrant? Let's check at this stage how many of you provide new employee orientation or for some sort of customization for skilled immigrant employees. So I can see that you are already responding to the polling question. So I'll pause here for a moment. So it looks as if we have almost the opposite numbers here. 25% 20, say they offer special uh, customization while the rest do not. That's uh, certainly very interesting. You know, I think I'd like to um, 
uh, point out that the Canadian work culture and language or communication skills are especially or of special relevance to the skilled immigrant employees. As a skilled immigrant who was new to Canada myself a few years ago, I stumbled upon differences with the work culture at PNG that I had experienced in my native land, uh, which is India. I did not know, for instance, that over here, the onus for action plan reviews and career development at regular intervals was entirely on the employee. And likewise, that one needed to volunteer for extra project work so that, could, so that you could set yourself apart from your peers. I suppose the managers concerned here did not realize that these needed to be explained to me because I was new to the country or new to the workplace. Moving ahead, I think there are five principles of orientation that I'd like to cover today. The first, of course, is prepare, prepare, prepare. And I, 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 from my own experience, I've found that checklists can cover a wide range of items from very simple, basic things like employee badge, salary, tax forms, etc., to policies and procedures, action plans, performance expectations, uh, organization objectives, and, and core values. The second point, I think, is to think beyond the first week or two. I have come to believe that for organizations of PNG size and complexity, a 100-day orientation period may work out better. Daily reviews in the initial weeks could give way to weekly checkpoints about the progress being made and the challenges the new employee is facing. Thirdly, I think that the orientation should keep in mind the need to grow social capital for the new employee. Developing relations, as we all know, with other employees is so crucial to getting work done. At PNG, we like to get new employees to join the, uh, a few of the networks like the New Hire Network or to serve on the fun team, which helps them to socialize with their department colleagues. And then we also offer them uh, opportunities to interact with the affinity networks. At that moving to the next point, adapt the standard plan to individual needs. This is especially relevant to cases like me who were new to the workplace in Canada. Uh, and we in PNG have seven affinity networks, and we encourage new hires to get involved from the very beginning. Finally, we, we, I, I think a, an orientation should help seek the employee's input and feedback. And what I mean by that is uh, I think every new hire has his or her own individual needs. And by, uh, by getting that input and feedback, the orientation is adapted to meet those specific needs and help the employee to hit the ground running. So let's quickly go over what we've covered so far. We noted in the first place that employee orientation has been used for a number of years and that it can help make or mar the performance of the new hire. We observed from the polling, the first poll, that uh, over 70% uh, actually run orientation programs. We then looked at the benefits of uh, effective orientation to the employee as well as the organization, and we discussed five guiding principles. I'd now like to turn to specific practices that blew me away, uh, and as I think about that, the first thing that comes to mind is use the orientation to inspire the employee. I'll give you my own example. The day I joined PNG, the first topic on the orientation agenda was well, for the 35 new hires was for us to have an hour-long session with the president, Tim Penner, who told us that we were the best of the best in the country because we were chosen, 35 of us chosen out of about 50,000 applicants that you know come into the PNG system every year. He then told us his own story of starting in the company at entry level and rising to the very top. I felt inspired. I felt like I could do, entertain a similar aspirations. And weeks later at a conference call, I learned that the company CEO in the United States 
had decided to withdraw a product from the market just because the company scientists could not say for sure it was fully safe for human use. That too inspired me because it demonstrated that PNG not just has a set of core values that it defines, but it also lives up to them when, called, when the situations so arise. The second thing from a successful practice standpoint is to bring the outside in. Encourage the new hires to bring their prior skills, experiences, and ideas into the organization. When you let the fresh in, you could be surprised by the results that you could get. Example, in PNG itself, a skilled immigrant who, were, who had come here from PNG Pakistan, where the PNG business was growing in double digits, came here and when he was put into a role of uh, leading the business care marketing, he found that the business care, uh, the, the, the baby care business was growing by about five to six percent a year. But because he had come from a Pakistan where he was accustomed to double digits, he found ways to move the business along more aggressively. And within a couple of years, the business was into a double digit growth, which for a country of Canada's size is, is impressive. The third thing is to celebrate successful transitions. Success really needs to be celebrated. I think you'll all agree with that. So all who helped with the orientation need to join that celebration. And fellowship has a way of drawing people closer, enabling team cohesion. Having covered these points, I think it's time for me to turn to Eileen. Eileen, can you tell us what kind of orientation you have for new employees at Providence Healthcare? Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Alan. So as mentioned earlier, Providence Healthcare is one of the several health employers in British Columbia and we are located in downtown Vancouver with several of our sites located in the Vancouver area. We have over 6,000 employees, 1,000 physicians and 1,500 volunteers that work for us and assist us. We are also partners in Nurse Vancouver. Nurse Vancouver is a collaboration of four health employers in the Vancouver area and we work together in recruiting registered nurses to opportunities within our places of employment. Registered nurses are hired through Nurse Vancouver um, to the organizations and it's a, basically it's a website and it's an organization where we participate together going to career fairs and recruiting um, registered nurses to the Vancouver area and the lower, what we call the lower mainland area here and primarily they're from countries such as the United Kingdom and Australia. So, as I'll just continue to go on, Alan. So Providence Healthcare offers an organization-wide new employee orientation. Our new employee orientation is a full day, and it also includes um, our CEO chatting about her experiences and welcoming all new employees. And um, we also do unit-specific and job-specific orientation sessions, and those can be up to a week long. And that includes for registered nurses a general nursing orientation, and those general nursing orientation includes several different classes, um, which include which enable the nurse to be able to do their position and their new role effectively. Um, while when training and training specifically for their roles, the new employees are given what we call guided bedside shifts and those are similar to what we'd call for call buddy shifts and we can um, have anywhere from up to two to four shifts for the new employee and possibly even more. It all depends on the registered nurse and how comfortable they are feeling during their training. Um, and if necessary, new employees who are also recent immigrants are supported with extended shifts as well and mentoring to gain confidence and better understand the Canadian workplace and their new workplace. Um, so total orientation for new employees can actually total up to about one month in length. Wow, that sounds very thorough, Eileen. Do you provide any additional support for the internationally educated nurses in your organization? We do, actually. We have nurse educators who work with um, our entry to practice program, which is similar to new graduate programs, and we also have unit-specific nurse educators. So they provide support to um, the internationally educated nurses and also to our registered nurses. Um, we also have workshops. 
Those workshops can include communication skills, which is a program that is in partnership with Vancouver Coastal Health here in Vancouver, and which is another health employer, and funded by the BC Ministry of Health. So it is a special program workshop that is um, funded by both Vancouver Coastal, BC Ministry of Health, and Providence Healthcare working in partnership. We also have, um, and this is just a few of the additional supports we have, we also have a tutor um, to come in and help prepare for the Canadian nurse exam. For, so for nurses who may be in what we call a provisional licensure state and still need to write their exam, we have a tutor that comes in about a month to six weeks prior to the exam and assists with um, tutoring and preparing for the nurse exam. We found that that has been a real popular um, workshop for um, skilled immigrants. Also, we provide, um, which is a fairly new workshop, but as we feel is very, very important, is an actual supervisory workshop in supporting um, the supervisors on how to support their internationally educated healthcare professional. I think could I ask a question? What kind of benefits have you seen by providing these kinds of programs? Um, the benefits, definitely, Alan, the benefits um, that help can help them be successful and productive. Um, it can also provide consistent, reliable care, which is in line with our mission, vision, and values. And, and also we find sometimes not everyone can be successful because it can be a difficult transition for the healthcare professional, but especially even for their families as well. So that is something also to keep in mind is that, um, you know, it can be a difficult transition and also what is going on with the um, internationally educated nurse and or healthcare professional. So right now I'm going to have Jackie Coffey. Now she is our operations leader, manager for the maternity services here at St. Paul's Hospital, which is one of our large acute care centers and hospitals in Vancouver. Thank you, Jackie. Hi. Hello. Um, my name is Jackie Coffey and and I was recruited from the UK uh, in 2008, November. And um, I've had a great experience here at St. Paul's Hospital. Uh, right from the first day, the nurse orientation, the, the new hire orientation was really good. And it was great to see the CEO come, come in to speak to us. Um, what I really valued was that my my experience, my previous experience was uh, was taken on board. Uh, my manager was very helpful, and she organized um, she organized my work schedule in such a way that I could attend um, the tutorial classes for internationally trained nurses to be able to take my CRNBC exams, which was which was excellent. It did help, and since then it's been it's been really great. Um, the various courses were offered, and after a year, I got promoted to become the nurse, the the clinical nurse educator. And uh, a year and a half later, I got promoted to become the manager of the uh, maternity and neonatal intensive care unit. So it's been a great experience um, coming to Vancouver and working at St. Paul's Hospital. That's very inspiring, Jackie. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Eileen, I hear that Providence Healthcare has a diversity services department. Is that true? And can you tell us uh, what that department does? Absolutely. So we do have a diversity services department here at Providence Healthcare. It is a bit unique in that we it's part of our mission um, department, and um, it provides training and leadership in the development of diversity competent practices, policies, and procedures. It is primarily patient care related, so assisting the healthcare professional in how to work with their patients and residents. Um, rather than employee related. However, we find that it does become, you know, it sort of goes both ways in that respect. Um, the diversity services, you know, they work with the people, the programs and the departments in promoting flexible and responsive services to the diverse populations that we encounter here at Providence Healthcare. 
Thanks so much, Eileen. Those are some really great practices. Thanks for sharing those with us today. Uh, for the benefit of everyone, I'd like to just quickly summarize all that we've uh, gone over today. Uh, we've covered in the first place the benefits of orientation. We said that transitions, it helps transition smoothly to the, the new employee, to the new organization and the job. Helps the employee understand the role, how it fits with the department, function, and organization. Helps to shorten the learning curve and achieve the organization objectives. Gets output from the employee sooner. Helps to minimize the costs associated with learning on the job. And finally, we also said it saves time from the co-workers and supervisors in training the new employee. We also covered uh, five key principles. We said that the first would be of these would be to prepare, prepare, prepare. We said that the second was think beyond the first week or two for whatever is most suitable to your organization. And in the case of PNG, for example, we, we try and follow a 100-day orientation. The third was to grow social capital. The fourth key principle was to adapt the standard plan to individual needs. And the fifth was to seek input and feedback as the orientation is in progress. Then we talked about adaptation of orientation programs to the skilled immigrant employees. And we went to, we heard from Eileen about the communication skills workshops and the extended mentorship and shadow shifts. Having uh, just uh, quickly summarized uh, what we discussed, I think it's time for questions from the audience. Uh, we have now moved moving into the Q&A part of our webinar. Uh, as announced earlier, if you can just type your questions in the chat box that appears on the bottom left corner of your screen, we would be happy to take them as, as they come in. Okay, while, while some of them are coming in, I see that we've already got a couple of questions here. So if it's okay with the audience, let me begin with the first question. The first question we've received is, what challenges, if any, did you face in creating an orientation program for internationally educated nurses? So what challenges did you face in creating the program for the nurses and how did you overcome them? I think this is, uh, Eileen, your best uh, place to help us with an answer here. Sure. So, Ellen, um, I, I'd say the challenges, and not, I wouldn't say there was too many challenges in, in faced in creating the orientation program. I think what we um, faced was that we did not, because we were new when we did a, a primarily a, a num great number of recruits, um, initially, we had a large number. Um, because we have such a thorough and rich um, orientation program for our new employees in general and our new registered nurses, we didn't see foresee some of the challenges that the internationally educated nurse was facing. So we had to sort of um, create other programs and input them into our orientation programs to ensure that um, we were addressing some of the issues. Some of them could have been practice issues and they could have been just simply differences in medication. So just the way the orientation was um, just you know, different names for orientation, as simple as Tylenol. It could be, you know, it's called a different name in the UK. And so therefore, you know, a nurse might not understand when it's, when something is being said, oh, we need Tylenol right away, and she doesn't know what that means. So it was just going back um, with the educators and making sure that the training um, in the general nurse orientation included some of those things simply um, like terminology. Thank you, Eileen. Let's go to the second question that's come in. Who is the best person to run the new employee orientation? Why don't I take that one? I think I've, I've, I've discovered that uh, the manager of the new employee is well placed to, you know, to run the orientation. But having said that, I think the manager needs to do this in, co in support, in cooperation with uh, 
the HR, uh, his HR uh, colleague, as well as those others who have a stakeholder relationship with will have a stakeholder relationship with the new employee i found that when the manager takes the direct lead for the employee orientation he is investing in in getting the output from the employee and is already building on the investment made in the hiring process and you know even striking a personal note one of the things that png does is before the employee even joins the the organization he or she is invited to a lunch and the idea behind that lunch is to introduce the empl- new employee to a buddy in a very informal and a social setting you know they can talk very freely have questions and answers and uh, you know shared and then a, a goodie bag of the png products is given to the employee and earlier we used to give a corporate brochure that talked about the company and the organization values and we also now have switched to the because people are more electronically oriented these days we give them a little ubs device which gives them a lot of information about the organization about our products as well as about the the department that they are joining let's see what other questions are coming up There's a question here is it appropriate to encourage newly hired skilled immigrants to take on extra curricular leadership opportunities or roles within the organization or is it something to be encouraged after the skilled immigrant employee has settled into the role any perspectives you have on this Eileen I I do have some and I'm happy to join after um I I kind of agree with the second part in that it's encouraged probably for the skilled immigrant to settle into their role first um, before they take on any extracurricular. I've never been advised if that's ever been an issue. I mean, we have obviously keen employees who are, you know, but most of them really want to get grounded first and get their skills, um, you know, in the new Canadian environment prior to jumping into other um, curricular activities. Thank you Eileen uh, and sharing my own experience here at PNG what we found is that um, uh, depending on what the employee has demonstrated through the interview hiring process um, we encourage the employee to participate either from you know starting the days or or, or later uh, it all depends on the empl- what skills the employee brings to the table if those skills find immediate ap- application in in the day to day role or if there is an opportunity to use the skills in an above and beyond role capacity for example in my own case when i was in my very first year with png uh, there was an opportunity to serve on the united way leadership team of the company and i volunteered to do that and my manager was very supportive i found that very helpful to me because through that role i came into contact with so many others in the company including senior management leadership and that really helped me feel uh, to experience the whole organization at an entirely new level that i would not have got if i were to have stuck purely to my role There's a question here for Eileen and the question is you mentioned that the BC Ministry of Health funds one of the workshops for internationally educated nurses how are the other supports funded which you mentioned the tutoring etc Sure. Um so they actually all are funded through Providence Healthcare um as part of our orientation and our uh, programs. Um so all of our supports are funded by Providence Healthcare and um when I was mentioning the other workshop it was a funding partnership with the BC Ministry of Health Bank of Coastal Health and ourselves. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have another question, and that is, what advice would you have for a small or medium company that wants to have a new employee orientation for skilled immigrants? Is this something you'd like to take, Eileen? Um, Alan, why don't you go ahead, <laughs> and I can always jump in as well. Okay. Well, uh, I think uh, it, the case with a smaller uh, company is that um, it might lack the resources that a large, well-established organization like PNG has, and so they might be thinking about a shorter uh, orientation period. Um, and my guess would be it could range from a week or two to about a month or so. I think the advice that uh, I'd like to uh, make to the new to, to to the smaller company is that. Employees are very keen to get off the mark and, you know, sh get their best foot forward, have a st as strong a start as possible. And any anything that the small company can do to enable and facilitate that, I would certainly encourage them to think about that. Is that something? You, is there anything you would like to add, Eileen, to that? No, I think you're absolutely right. Um, I, I completely agree with you on that. Yeah. Another question has just come in, and that is for Eileen, I think. What are some of the key components of the communications workshop that you offer for skilled immigrants? Um, that, unfortunately, I don't actually put that communications workshop on, so I'm not um, familiar with it. But I know some of the um, components can be um, just what I was mentioning earlier about terminology um, and also working with um, in sort of the environment and the communication. So for example, um, if you have a registered nurse who is not used to being um, speaking up and sort of you know, voicing their opinion and just sitting in sort of the background and listening to, say, other healthcare professionals such as doctors or specialists. It's t it's sort of training and showing that it's the Canadian culture, communication style, and how that you know their voice is heard and they need to speak up. They need to be able to have the confidence to um, voice that sort of opinion or situation that might be arising on their unit. Thanks for sharing that perspective, Eileen. You're at, welcome. At, at PNG, for example, oh, we have not had a communication workshop for skilled immigrants in-house, but what we've done is we've encouraged for employees who knew, uh, needed to improve their English uh, skills, we've uh, supported them in going for English language training. And as a general principle, what we do is we encourage the new employees to join Toastmasters. And for those who may not know, Toastmasters is an organization that enables the development of communication and leadership skills. And uh, at PNG, we have a, a Toastmaster uh, uh, club. And I, so I took advantage of that opportunity. I joined that club. And I found that my own communication skills have improved so much that, you know, I'm often now asked to speak at public events. So from a point, uh, from a stage where I didn't know what was expected in the uh, Canadian workplace, work environment, today, you know, I'm so comfortable. And I think Toastmasters has helped me develop that proficiency. The question for Eileen here, do you have a formal mentoring program for internationally trained professionals as part of your orientation process? Um, thanks, Alan. As part of as what I had mentioned earlier, uh, we do have mentoring for internationally trained professionals. Um, it is part of their orientation, and it's on an as-needed basis. So, so we're quite uh, fortunate in that we have nurse educators um, and also um, unit-specific nurse educators that work specifically with the new employees and therefore the um, internationally trained um, nurse or health professional um, as part of their own orientation process. So what that means is it's all individually tailored to their needs. So somebody from, um, you know, who's come in and is from, 
you know, another country and is really feeling that they need some more um, mentoring shifts, some more guided bedside shifts, um, absolutely can work with their nurse educator in requesting those and getting those until they feel confident about um, working on the unit um, and within their new workplace. Um, and so it's really on an as-needed basis. Um, somebody, another, you know, newly um, hired skilled immigrant might not feel that need and so they don't need it. So then nobody's set in a you must have five days or you must have four shifts, that type of thing. It is um, it's really tailored to their own needs. Thanks for sharing that, Eileen. Uh, if I might uh, throw a little light on what PNG does here in the area of mentorship, um, we do have a very strong mentorship program and we encourage uh, new hires. We say that they can get a new mentor, a, a mentor in one of two ways. They can either seek one from the function or department, say, you know, uh, that, that, their, that their skills lie. For example, somebody in marketing might look for somebody who has already uh, established himself or herself in the marketing area. Or, or the other is to... Uh, link them up through one of our affinity networks and sometimes we find especially uh, those who are new to the country and who may lack the you know workplace uh, uh, expertise or comfort level they they are most comfortable with getting a mentor from the one of the affinity networks uh, an Asian for example will you know seek an Asian mentor uh, regardless of what professional background the person is from and so we found that both these approaches uh, help the new person, new employee, to be, become comfortable with the organization. The next question that's come up is, what are Providence's healthcare, Providence Healthcare's future plans around onboarding? Okay. Um, well. To be honest with you, we are always looking at our onboarding programs and trying to um, tweak them and, and, and enhance them and ensuring that they are meeting the needs of our new employees um, in what their needs are. So I don't, I'm unfortunately not privy to exactly what some of the plans are around the onboarding, but I do know for our new employee orientation, which is the first day of employment for most of our new hires, that we are looking at sort of how we can best um, provide that. Um, so meaning like part of it will be online, part of it will be excuse me, part of it will be online and part of it will also be um, in person. So really, you know, ensuring that um, the new employee is getting a well-rounded onboarding experience. Thank you, Aline. For those who may have joined this uh, call a little late, late uh, you know, at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, there's a chat box, and feel free to post your question. We'll be happy to take them in. The next one which has come in is, how are existing employees engaged in the onboarding process? Any, any thoughts here, uh, Eileen, how this thing works in, at Providence Healthcare? Um, well, existing employees are always engaged. I know the units do, um, you know, each nursing unit and department have sort of their own ways of engaging employees and um, working with them. Um, we're engaging our new employees all the time as well as our um, existing employees. So specifically some of the types of programs, um, it really all depends on what the nursing unit and what's going on at that time. I know they have, um, you know, in addition to team meetings and, um, and rounds and, and such, they also do a lot of um, social events. And also some of the units, I've been told, also have um, a buddy in the sense that they assign somebody to from the first day of employment. And so this is an addition. This is not the guided shift I was talking about, but this is essentially somebody to you know, hang out with them, have lunch with them, you know, answer any questions, guide them around the hospitals that they may or may not be working in and so are some of the different areas they might be working in and really just helping them in that process. Thank you, Irene. And if I might add a little bit of what PNG does is that uh, 
existing employees are, are always encouraged to get involved and uh, these are viewed uh, very positively that they are seen that the employee is stepping up to take up roles above and beyond their core work and uh, these are put into the action plan and you know uh, at the end of the year we have a process of uh, what we call working work development uh, uh, performance and reviews so these reviews capture the results that the existing employee might have made to the successful orientation of a new employee. And that's viewed positively because it shows that the person has demonstrated leadership uh, by getting involved with the new employee orientation. Let's see what other questions are coming up. Do engineering companies engage in onboarding practice? Wow. I have no idea. I don't either, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would imagine that every organization yeah. would have a, some kind of orientation, however short or long. Mm -hmm. hmm. And I would think that if they're hiring international um, engineers, then, you know, from other countries, that they probably would have that. Absolutely. Uh, I have no doubts at all that when it comes to skilled immigrant employees, there's certainly an even better case for, for employee orientation. Regardless of, you know, which sector the organization might be. Uh, for that matter, I think I would venture to suggest that even non-profit organizations and academic institutions would feel the need for uh, employee orientation. As a matter of fact, I do know that universities, you know, they have uh, not just for employees, but even they have orientation for students and, and prospective students, right? So. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to uh, have a question for Jackie? Because I understand Jackie's got a. Actually, Alan, she just had to leave, so oh. she's not available. Oh, okay. And, and sorry, this is Shannon, uh, the host. I just wanted to point out that uh, Karen Heltz has joined us, and she also just commented here that um, engineering companies do engage in onboarding practice, and that in her experience it has been quite intensive, um, particularly engineering companies in, in the high-tech world. So just to kind of share that from one of our, our fellow participants. I thought that was interesting. Thank Thanks, you, Shannon. Sh thank you, Shannon. That, that's nice to have that uh, uh, perspective. Any more questions, uh, the, you can enter them in the chat box on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, we do have another question here. Um, why do you think that some employers don't pay as much attention to onboarding programs as they do to recruiting? Alan, did you want to take that or do you want me to? Sure, I, I, I can uh, take, care and, uh, take that and if you'd like to join in, uh, feel free mm -hmm. to do so, uh, Eileen. Uh, I think uh, new empl uh, some employers might not be willing to do so because if, if their recruitment process might already have an element of the onboarding uh, program, that's one possibility. The other is they could be lacking time or resource uh, in their organization. Say they've got to deliver something to their customers or they've got to meet a certain business need and they're lacking the resources uh, and, and therefore they have, you know, don't have the time to devote or resource to devote to uh, in uh, onboarding the new employee. Um, these are two sort of uh, factors that quickly jump out at me. Uh, the third, I would imagine, is I think with the, the digital world having invaded our space so much, if there's a way that they're already providing this uh, 
uh, some parts of the orientation even before the employee you know formally takes up the role uh, any, any thoughts you have Eileen um, actually, I was exactly going to say very similar to you is just, you know, it depends on resources, it depends on their focus, um, and, um, and but as we know, it is important, um, the onboarding, just as much as the recruiting, and sometimes it's not realized until after, um, you know, employees start and then you having, you know, engagement issues or such. And in a sense, it reminds me of how some companies pay a lot of attention to training the employees, for example, and some companies pay less attention to it, you know, so. Let's see, is there any other question coming in, Shannon, or should we be thinking of wrapping up? Or? No, um, we have another one here, um, specifically looking at the digital world, and uh, what do you think the role of online, uh, sorry, online resources uh, will be, in, and how helpful are they in onboarding programs? Sorry, could you please repeat that? Yes. Um, so how, what kind of role do you see online resources playing in onboarding programs? So using the internet, uh, webinars like this, other other resources. Absolutely, there are there are, there's a ton of resource on the on the internet, uh, and organizations and small companies that you know may not have the in-house capabilities or resources, they can you know find a lot of interesting information and tips that could help them with orientation. So. I'm a great fan. Uh, Any time that I've got to do any any bit of my work, I, I do a bit of research. And in fact, I did go on the online side and found a lot of information. I know um, uh, hireimmigrants.ca, Matri, they all have lots of information uh, to, of interest to uh, skilled immigrants in particular. So I, I'm all for that. Any thoughts, Ivy? Um, exactly. As I had mentioned earlier, we are looking at um, utilizing our online resources and looking at our onboarding um, and doing parts of it online because I think it is helpful in um, being able to capture sort of the audience and as we are changing in the world. But I also want to caution too that we feel here also that the face-to-face, -face, the feedback we get and we ask for feedback after all of our new employee orientations is that face-to-face -face is just as important to them, um, to the attendees and to the new employees. So. I really feel that it's a combination of both. It's trying to address, um, you can get more information because you have limited time in your day. You can get probably more information with the online resource and the online onboarding, but also um, having that face-to-face, -face, and such as our CEO speaking um, at the beginning, opening it up, um, where ha we have our Vice President of Mission and Ethics talk about our culture and our diversity and the differences um, we face with our patient population and and also our employees as well and just sort of looking at it from that perspective so I think it's a it's a both components are very important uh, absolutely uh, and uh, at PNG for example we have in, in especially in the Canadian organization we have a number of employees who perform roles that are uh, regional or global in nature and Take my own example. I, I I sit here in Toronto, but I have North America responsibility for my uh, area of work. And uh, uh, one way the company tries to overcome the challenges of uh, working from remote locations, and in some cases, you know, our employees work from home. They have the flex. We have flex working practices, and so one way we overcome these uh, handicaps is to to have. Uh, computer systems and to have a video conferencing studios uh, so that we can see each other. So I have uh, a computer and I suppose that there would be that there are devices available today that have a microphone as well as a camera attached to their computer and so when my manager sits in the US uh, my some of Two of my direct reports sit in the U.S. I sit here, so whenever we need to see each other, we are able to do so, you know, by the flick of a button, so to say. So, in a sense, that face-to-face -face, uh, interaction is enabled by technology. Right. 
One more question has come in. Onboarding should ideally be a two-way learning process for employers as well as for the skilled immigrant employees. Do you in your organization celebrate diversity? If so, how? You want to take that one, Ivy? Sure, I can take that one. Um, at Providence Healthcare, we definitely celebrate diversity. I mean, we have a diversity department as well as um, even just as simple as at Providence Healthcare, we have um, a very rich and cultural, the diverse population. Um, and in the Vancouver area as well. And so one of our organizations um, in our acute care hospital, they have, um, such as like Chinese New Year, there's a celebration um, recognizing that and employees and residents and patients participate alike. We also have um, in our um, every sort of time there is something to be um, recognized where our communications and our mission and ethics department send out a sort of a global email to everyone in the organization recognizing and celebrating and it's either with a reflection or a recognition for something that may be going on at that time. So for example, the Jewish High Holidays, um, the Diwali, which is I know it's just passed and coming up, um, as well as, um, as I mentioned, Chinese New Year. So just some of those different um, diverse um, celebrations are some of the simple um, ones. And we, we uh, at PNG, thank you, uh, Eileen. PNG is, is a big uh, champion of diversity in the workplace. We've got a number of awards in recognizing the practices that we've had. We have seven uh, diversity networks and uh, women and black history, uh, black professional network, Asian professional network, the Gable network, French Canadian network, and so. Uh, these net, each of these networks uh, runs programs for their own constituent members. And then I served uh, for three years on the Asian uh, uh, leadership team for diversity. And now I, I serve on the Canadian uh, 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 PNG Canada's uh, national diversity team. I see that we are at almost at the end of... Alan, there's just one quick thing I just wanted to interject, if you don't mind, sure. about the diversity. And one thing I didn't mention earlier, but um, I think was an important component to um, the sort of the onboarding is that in nurse, within Nurse Vancouver, we have what was called, and it's still running, um, a social network. So very similar to kind of like Facebook in that respect, um, but it was specifically, and it had to ha you had to have your own login and your own um, password, but it was a social network for um, registered nurses that had arrived in Vancouver but really needed some supports from their colleagues and maybe, you know, even simply asking where do I find, you know, my favorite food from home? I can't seem to find it here. And, you know, is there a specialty store? Things like that. And we found that that was really, really popular as well. I appreciate your sharing that, uh, uh, Eileen. Uh, I noticed that we are just a minute away from closing time, so uh, unfortunately we can't take any more questions. But before we go, I'd really like to thank Eileen and Jackie for sharing their time and their exper expertise, their stories, their inspiration with us. Thank you to all participants who joined us today from across the country. I know some of you have joined us for the first time, but I'd like to really request you to please complete the short evaluation survey that may have just popped up in your Internet browser. And all those who registered for this program will receive an email when the webinar is available for view on hireimmigrants.ca. You can also visit the site to find previous webinars and other great tools and resources for employers, including regular e-tips. The next uh, uh, webinar is on intercultural competence. Wow, intercultural competence. That's going to be held on the 30th of November. And if you're interested in that topic, you can sign up through hireimmigrants.ca or directly at http colons forward slash forward slash intercultural competence dot eventbrite. And eventbrite is e v e n t b r i t e dot com. Thanks again to everyone for logging in and joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. Bye.